God bless you. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. First, before I go any further, I just want to thank every subscriber, 50 subscribers to God be the glory. Thank you, faithful followers, for tuning in to hear a word from the Lord. And yes, I am set for the defense of the gospel. And no, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe. Amen. It's a privilege and an honor to be able to stand to share a word with you from the Lord. And no, Amen. The devil is a liar. Let me encourage somebody to let you know you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to walk in fear. The Bible said that God have not given us a spirit of fear. Amen. So many people, amen, is bound by fear. The devil is tormenting and attacking people with fear. But beloved of God, you don't have to fear. I know, amen, that you're hurting. I know, amen, that you're dealing with situations that seem uncertain. And you at a crossroad in your life, you're facing, amen, decisions in your life that you never dealt with before. Amen. Some of y'all might be, amen, dealing with health conditions. Amen. But let me admonish you. Let me encourage you to acknowledge the Lord in all thy ways and he shall direct your path and you don't have to fear. God is a God of comfort. His comfort ought to soothe that fear, to soothe that troubled mind. Amen. To soothe that uncertainty, to soothe Hallelujah, Jesus, that doubt that's going through through your mind. Amen. Sometimes the enemy will bring doubt. Amen. And sometimes we are in just the situations of uncertainty. But, but beloved of God, when God is on your side, uh, perfect love will cast out fear. Uh, hallelujah. Because we realize, we recognize and understand that God is on our side. Uh, amen. The devil is a liar. He come. Uh, amen. To torment the people of God with fear. The devil. Uh, amen. He wants you despondent. He wants you dismayed. He wants you discouraged. The devil will bring fear to keep you entrapped. The devil he'll bring fear to keep you restricted. He'll bring fear the spirit of fear upon you to make you hesitant to make you uncertain about stretching out on God. Some of us got a, God got a plan and a will for our life. Some of us got a calling on our life. God has called us and anointed us. We are sanctified and set apart to stand out Amen. But the devil don't want you to stand out. The devil don't want you to go forth in God. The devil wants you, amen, to close your mouth and not be a witness. And the devil will bring fear to keep your mouth closed. But beloved of God, you got to stretch out on favor. You got to have that confidence in God. Amen. Despite how I feel, I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus. Despite how I feel, I'm going to open up my mouth for God. The more you appreciate what God have done for you, the more you will overcome that fear, because fear have tormented, but because I appreciate God, and nobody else can tell it like I can, nobody else know what I've been through, or what God has brought me through better than me, so because I know where God has brought me from, despite how I feel, I'm going to set my feelings off to the side, and I'm going to go forth in God, I'm going to let somebody else know that if God brought me out of darkness, that God I can bring you out to and I will not let fear keep me dormant I will not let fear tangle me up and restrict me from pleasing God for working for God Hallelujah, Jesus, for laboring in God. The devil is a liar. He don't want me to preach right now, but I'm going to encourage somebody. Beloved, you can overcome fear. You can overcome. The Bible said that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And anything that comes against you, that attacks you, we got power in God. Amen. To be more than a conqueror, to overcome that spirit of fear. Fear won't let you give God the best you got. But it's time to overcome fear and those feelings. How many know we're not supposed to walk, beloved, by feelings? The just shall live by favor. The just shall walk by favor and not by sight. We can't walk by feelings. I can't walk by how I feel. I can't minister by how I feel. I can't pray and encourage somebody or witness to somebody based on how I feel. 
feel. Feelings has got to be pushed to the side. Amen. My problems and my thoughts, it got to be pushed to the side. Amen. Beloved, you can encourage yourself in God. You can lift up your own bow down head. When the devil bring that feeling of fear, fear do not testify. Fear to not open up your mouth. Fear to not participate in the Bible studies. Fear to not participate in the Sunday schools. Fear to not participate in the kingdom agenda. Hallelujah, Lord God, but beloved, you can overcome that fear right now. Anything that come against you, God said he would not suffer it, amen, amen, to overtake you, but will with that temptation make a way of an escape that you'll be able to bear it. God got power. God is able to deliver you from that fear. Sometimes you're just going to have to tune it out. God, I feel this way. God, I feel nervous. God, I feel anxiety. But God, in the name of Jesus, God, I'm going to do this for your glory, God, because I love you and I want to please you. And how many know the moment that you step out on faith, the minute that you open up your mouth, the Holy Ghost will move that doubt. The Holy Ghost will move that fear. And the Spirit of Lord will take over because the Spirit of the Lord is not restricted by fear because fear hath torment. The Bible said he that feareth is not made perfect in love. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what that means. Amen. When you fearing God, amen, to step out on faith on God, when you letting things, amen, and the feeling of fear, the oppression, the things that's going on in your life, amen, whatever the fear may be tormenting you about, when you allow that fear, to cause you not to trust God when you allow that fear not to cause you to seek the face of God to depend on God to rely on God when you cause that fear to cause you to have a lack in confidence in God amen you are not made perfect in God's love because God's love amen it'll cloud our fear God's love and understanding that God love me that God will help me that God will supply all all my knees, that God is with me, that God's gonna give me the victory, that God's gonna fight my battle, that God will make me come out victorious, and when you have that understanding of the love of God for you, amen, it's gonna cast out all fear, but when you allow that fear to cause you to cast away your faith and confidence in God, you are not made perfect in God's love. We gonna look at the scripture here, Amen. In Isaiah 41 and 10, the Bible said to fear thou not. That's talking to you. Huh? Amen. Fear thou not. Don't you fear. Huh? For I am with thee. Huh? When you realize and recognize exactly who God is. Huh? When you come eat out of shanda, eat out of bahaya, When you come to recognize the God that it is you serve. Huh? That he ain't like these other gods. He ain't like these images and idols that's made with man hands. Huh? That bring things to not that can't work, that can't hear, that can't speak. Uh, a dumb idol. God is a living God. He's a powerful God. He's an almighty God and he liveth and abideth forever. God is omniscient. God is omnipresent. God, uh, he's omnipotent. Uh, once you realize and recognize who it is that called you, uh, who it is that called you to a high calling, who it is that saved you, uh, who it is that called you to be a servant and who's on your side who's there with you who's there fighting for you the eternal everlasting almighty God when you realize who it is that told you not to fear because I am with thee you will understand beloved that you don't have to give in to fear that you don't have to give in to the wiles of the enemy fear thou not for I, I, the Lord God, almighty God, everlasting God, the one with nothing is too hard with God. He said, for I am with you, not these other gods that's powerless, not people, not men, not women, amen, things and people that can forsake you, people that can let you down, people are mean well. 
People will promise you things but can't help you. People will promise you and get your hopes built up, but they'll let you down because they restricted, because they limited. But with God, nothing is too hard. Nothing is restricted and nothing is limited. He said, fear thou not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. That word me, dismayed, that means to, amen, to be in a state of discouragement. Dismayed means to be with a loss of courage. We don't have to be dismayed. We don't have to be discouraged. We don't have to walk. Uh, amen. With a bow down head, with a loss of encouragement, with a loss of enthusiasm. We don't have to be dismayed. Sometime uh, the devil here come to bring things to cause you to be dismayed. But be thou not dismayed. Don't rest in dismay. Uh, lift up your head. Increase your confidence. Uh, have that faith in God that God will be there. Uh, he said, fear thou not for I I am with thee. Be not dismayed for I am thy God. He's your God. He's going to fight for you. He's going to overlook you. He's going to be right there to support, to aid, to help you. Fear thou not for I am with thee. Neither be dismayed for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Amen. When the enemy try to bring that spirit of fear and when he try to bring that feeling of tiredness, weakness, weakness, Weariness. God will be there to strengthen you. Be not weary and well doing, for ye shall reap if you faint not. You don't have to. Amen. Give in to weakness. That spirit of weakness, being down, being weary, being worn, being hallelujah, ostracized. Amen. Being put to the side by people. Amen. And that thing tends to wear on you. Amen. When it seems like others forsake you, and it seems like God, even Himself, amen man have hid his face from you and yet you're going through, yet you're seeking God, yet you're praying and it seemed like nothing is getting the better. Amen. I understand that that can bring a state of weariness, but beloved be not weary in well doing. Don't you be weary in trusting God and seeking God and even while you waiting on God be thou a man of a good courage. Don't be dismayed. Amen. God will strengthen you. God will give you that strength. God will do something in your life to remind you that he's there. God will do something in your life. God will speak something in your life. God will let you know that I will strengthen you. And the way God strengthens you is better than any way that man could strengthen you. God got a way beloved of strengthening the core of your soul. The depthness of your soul. In the root of your mind. God God will strengthen you. Amen. Your inner being. God will strengthen you. Though that outward man perish, the inner man is renewed day by day. It's renewed with more strength. It's renewed with more perseverance. It's renewed with more of a determination to keep my hands in God's hands and to stay the course. Beloved, be encouraged because God will strengthen you. Yea, I will help you. And the way God help you might not be the way that you want God to help you. But whatever your will is, Lord, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done, God. You know what I need better than I know what I need. But God, I'm calling on help right now, God. The devil is bringing this fear against me, God. But I don't have to give in to fear. I don't have to be subject to fear. One one thing about it, people, when fear comes, uh, fear comes to keep you tormented. Fear comes to keep you restricted. Uh, fear comes to keep you in bondage. Uh, fear comes to keep you confined uh, when God came to set you free. Uh, beloved, you don't have to be confined and restricted in fear. Uh, God break bonds in your life. Uh, God will break chains in your life. Uh, God freed you from, uh, amen, from sin and shame. Uh, God will free you from that feeling of torment, uh, that feeling of fear that come to oppress you. Uh, I will uphold thee. Uh, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Uh, God's right hand is symbolic for power. Uh, right hand of God is symbolic for authority. Uh, the right hand uh, of God will uphold you in righteousness uh, because God is a just God. Uh, God is a righteous God uh, and God will not uh, a man turn away his people. Uh, God will be 
be there to help. I will strengthen thee. When God strengthen you, amen, that strength in your weakness. How many know sometimes we might feel weak, but God is there to strengthen your weakness. God told Paul, he said, my grace, Jesus said, my grace, my grace, my grace, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength. How many know we need God's strength? He said, my strength is made perfect in weakness. So when you feel weak, that's when God will complete you. That's when God's strength is made perfect. That's when it's made complete and divine in your life because he'll pick you up and turn you around. God will renew your mind. God will give you that boldness, that eagerness, that confidence to stretch out on him. Amen. Second Timothy 1 and 7. Amen. The Bible said for God have not given us the spirit of fear. See, there's a spirit that comes along with fear. Sometimes fear is good. Amen. I fear to not mess with a rattlesnake. Amen. But we're not talking about the fear that's good. We're talking about that fear that will displace your trust in God. We're talking about the kind of fear that won't let you move and operate for God. The kind of fear that won't let you work for God. That won't let your labor for God, the kind of fear that displeased God, for God have not given us a spirit of fear, that kind of fear don't come from God, that kind of fear comes from the devil, that kind of fear, it comes from the evil workers of iniquity, amen, I'm talking about them demons, I'm talking about them evil spirits from the devil, that comes to torment you, God have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, God gave Given us the spirit of power. The spirit of power comes from God. The spirit of love, it comes from God. And the spirit of a sound mind. God don't want you tormented. God don't want you discombobulated. God don't want you uneasy in the thoughts of your mind, in the seat of your mind. But God have given us power, love, and of a sound mind, a sober mind, a clear mind, a focused mind, a mind that's focused on God, a God a mind that's focused on the work of God, a mind that's focused um, that I gotta please God at all costs. We got to please God while it's day for the night time coming when death come when you're in your grave. No man can work, but it's time to work while it's day. So fear get out of my way. I got to please my Jesus. Amen. When Jesus feared, the Bible said that he feared death. Amen. That he had he called on God with strong cries and tears and the Bible said that he was heard of him in that that he feared. So Jesus know what it like means to be fearful. Jesus know what it means, amen, to come in contact with fear. But beloved, we not going to let fear ransom and arrest us. We going to give in amen to the spirit and power of God, giving in to that love that we have toward God, that despite the fear I'm going to serve God despite the fear I'm going to sing for his glory despite the fear I'm going to testify for his glory despite the fear I'm going to preach um, amen to the glory come down y'all ain't with me um, amen first John 4 and 18 the Bible said there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear because fear hath tormented he that feareth is not made perfect in love love. Don't you see that fear hath torment? Fear comes with torment. Fear causes distress. Fear causes anxiety. Fear causes uneasiness. Fear causes you to be hesitant on doing the will of God. Everything that fear bring is the opposite of what God represent. Amen. God represent peace and safety. In God there is safety. In God there is security. In God there is calmness. In God there is rest But fear it comes to disrupt your peace Fear comes to disrupt your calmness Fear comes to disrupt your ease Hallelujah Fear comes to disrupt Amen That security and comfort that you have in God But fear hath torment There is no fear in love God got love Love that will consolate you Love that will abide forever Love that will cause you To keep your mind on things above 
uh, and the more you keep your mind on things above, uh, beloved, the less you will fear things that you see every day. Uh, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. I know that I'm right. Uh, amen. Psalms 23 and 4. The Bible said, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, I will fear no evil uh, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Uh, see, beloved, even though we walking through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, we might be walking and living and abiding and going through uh, dangerous and turmoils times in our life. Uh, but even in that, I will fear no evil. Uh, makes no difference what the evil is. Uh, evil of bad reports from the doctor. Evil, amen, from these names of cancer diseases. Uh, I will fear no evil. Uh, we don't even have to fear death itself uh, because when we love God and we are in the love of God, uh, amen, to be absent from the body is still to be present with the Lord. Uh, and death, where is thy sting? Uh, oh, grave, where is thy victory? Uh, hallelujah for the sting of death is sin, but God delivered us from sin, so we don't have to fear death. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Hallelujah, for the Bible said, for thou art with me. When God is with us, what's the need to be afraid? Why we gotta be afraid when we got God with us? God ain't there just to be there. God is there to protect you. God is there to be a shield for you. God is there to uphold you. God is there to heal you. God is there to fight your battles. God is there, amen, to put the enemy under the sole of your feet. God is there to make you more than a conqueror. God is there to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose hearts are perfect toward him because they trust in him. Trust you in the Lord Jehovah for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Uh, for thou art with me. Uh, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Uh, the shepherd's rod is used for protection uh, against the, the things that oppose they sheep. Uh, that's what that rod is for. Um, amen. To protect against the threats against the sheep. Uh, but it's also for guidance. Uh, so thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me uh, while the staff is used uh, for support and for rescuing the sheep. Uh, when the sheep go astray or get in danger so thy rod and thy staff they comfort me I am comforted to know that God's going to protect me I'm comforted to know that God's going to aid me I'm comforted to know that God he supports me God's rod and his, his rod and his staff it comforted me to know that God will be there for me that I can rest, that I can be at peace, that I can have it, amen, with a head lifted up, walking through the valley of the shadow of death, because his ride and his staff, which represents protection, safety, rescuing, and guidance, is there to protect me, is there to comfort me. Joshua 1 and 9, I'm almost over, Joshua 1 and 9, amen, the Bible said, have not I commanded thee. How many know God got a lot of commandments, and just like God commanded Joshua, God commanded Moses, God is commanding me and God is commanding you. He said, have not I commanded thee. Be strong and of a good courage. God, he expect us to be strong. He expect us to be of good courage. How? By having faith in him. Have not I commanded thee. Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. That's a commandment. He commanded Joshua to not be afraid. God had to comfort Joshua. God had to encourage Joshua. God had to command Joshua, amen, to be strong. Have not I commanded thee to be strong and of a good courage and be not afraid. Hallelujah, Jesus. And neither be thou dismayed. God, he got expectations. Amen. For his people. God don't want you weak. God don't want you dismayed. God don't want you sad. God don't want you sitting in the corner with your phone on mute, never participating. God wants you to make known his deeds. Neither be thou dismayed for the Lord thy God is with thee, whether so ever thou goest. That's Joshua 1 and 9. God promised to be with us whether so ever we go. It makes no difference what type of situation, what type of condition that we find ourselves in. God is with me. 
Amen. If it's in a hospital alone, God is with me. If you find yourself facing circumstances where it seems like everybody is against you, beloved of God, be of strong and of a good courage. Neither be thou dismayed knowing that God is with you. God will be there for you. When your enemies, when they come against you, God will be there for you. Amen. Whether so ever thou goest, makes no difference. No matter whatever state you in, whatever country you in, whatever city, whatever town, whatever problem you in, whatever circumstances you find yourself in, God is with you whether so ever thou goest. When I'm in a dark place in my life, well, God, he is the light. No saint ought to be in dark places when God is the light and you children of the light. See, you need the devil to stop deceiving you. Hey, man, I found myself in a dark place in my life. Why have you the light of Christ? Why have you got the light of the world? Why have you are the light of the world? What you doing in dark places? See, you done gave vent to the devil somewhere in your life. Amen. But don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. Even if you are in the dark place, let the glorious gospel of the light of Christ shine in your life and to pull you up out of that darkness. We are no more of darkness, but now we are children of light and it's time to walk as children of the light. Hallelujah, Jesus. Light, it shines out of darkness. Because I have the light in me and I'm walking in the light as he is in the light. Amen. I'm illuminating any path, any place of darkness I find myself in. I'm illuminating that darkness because I got the light of Christ in me, Jesus. Psalms 27, 1 and 3. The Bible said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I Fear. We don't have to fear people. We don't have to fear the devil. We don't have to fear the workers of the enemy. Whom shall I fear? Why you got to fear when God is your light, when God is your salvation, when God is your help, when God is your deliverer? Whom shall I fear? What I got to be afraid of? What I got to be worried of when God is my deliverer? The Lord is the strength of my life. I ain't got to fear about being weak and warm when God is my strength. Of whom shall I be afraid? What you afraid of people for? Why are you fearing people? When God is your strength, when God is your light, when God is your salvation. The Bible said in verse number two, when the wicked, even my enemies, when the devil and people that's against me, that's of the devil, even my foes come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Because God is on your side. God will bring, amen, them people to their knees. God know how to cause that devil to lose. God know how to rebuke the devil at your lowest state when your lowest condition and your weakest condition. When you are fearful and dreadful and be afraid, God will step in and God will send power to rebuke the enemy out of your life and cause them all to stumble and fall. Yes, Lord. Verse number three said, when a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not a host. That's a whole large uh, gathering of people. That's a large number of people. Sometimes it don't have to be a number of people. It could be a host of things. It could be a host of problems. Back to back, piling up on top of you. Should encamp against me. I still don't have to fear. Because I know I'm pleasing God. I know I belong to God. I know I'm serving God. I know I'm pleasing God. God will never leave me nor forsake me. You don't have to fear because God won't leave you. You don't have to fear because God won't forsake you. You don't have to fear because there's no failure in God. There's no defeat in God. God is faithful. God will always be there. You don't have to fear or worry about if God will be there. Yes, God will be there. Get rid of those doubtful thoughts. Though a host should encamp against me, whether it's people or things, my heart shall not fear. You see, you can't allow fear to get in your heart. You can't allow fear to set up shop in you. Hallelujah. The war should arise against me in this. Will I be confident in what? In the fact that the Lord is my light. And that the Lord is my salvation, that he's my help, that he's my rescuer, that he's my redeemer, that he's my problem solver. He's my burden bearer. He's my trouble old sharer. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm almost done. Proverbs 29 and 25. The fear of man bringeth a snare. See, the devil, he'll cause you to fear people. 
But we are, and, 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 and when we begin to fear people, that'll compromise our integrity, that'll compromise our decisions, that'll compromise, amen, I walk with God, fear not man, we can't allow our fear of people to overrule and override our fear of God. The fear of man bringeth a snare. It'll trap you, it'll tangle you up. Because now you walking in the fear of man, fearing what people say, fearing how people going to treat you, fearing if people accept you. Fear, fear, fear. The fear of man bringeth a snare. But whoso and fear will send you to hell. Fear will send you to hell. I just heard that fear bringeth a snare. The Bible said Revelation 21 and eight. But the fearful. When you walking in fear. When you allowing the fear of man to trump and supersede your fear and your reverence and, and your respect and obedience for God, you're fearful. And the Bible said the fearful and unbelieving, the abominable, the whoremongers, the sorcerers, the idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Fear cause you to be lost. Fear bringeth the snare. Fear will send you to hell. But Shando, whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. When we trust in God, we don't have to fear. You don't even have to fear fear. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, I'm, I'm worried about oh, what about what, what, what happened if I become fearful? What happened if I be? You don't even have to fear fear. Whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. First Peter five and seven said, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. God careth for you and you can cast all your cares upon him. What kind of cares you can whatever your care is, whatever your worry is, whatever your concern is, whatever your fear is, put your fear, cast your fears upon him. For he cared for you. Cast your worries upon him. Cast your concerns upon him. For he cared for you. Whatever your care is. Anxiety. Cast that anxiety upon him because he cared for you. Depression. Cast your depression upon him because he cared for you. And he'll deliver you. Matthew 10, 28 says, And fear not them which kill the body. Again, going back to that other scripture in Proverbs 29 and 25, we're talking about the fear of man bringeth the snare. Matthew 10 and 28 said, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. See, it's only so much that man could do to you people. It's only so much that the devil can do to you. It's only so much that the devil and people can do to you. Amen. But what about fearing God? What about referencing God who's able not only to kill that body? See, that's all the devil can do is to kill your body. He can't send you to hell. God got that power. Amen. As long as you die saved, you still got the victory. You still defeated the devil. You still won. You still victorious. Don't fear people. Don't fear the devil, which is able to kill the body, but not able to kill that soul. But rather fear him, reverend God, obey God which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. I got so many other scriptures for you, beloved, but I think I'm going to just leave you with this last one. Psalms 91, four through six. 90, Psalms 91, four through six said he talking about God. He see, keep your focus on the deliverer. Keep your focus on the one who never lost the battle, who never lost the case and who never will. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. It didn't say plead the blood. It didn't say he going to cover you by the blood. Plead the blood. Pleading the blood ain't going to do nothing for you people. The blood, the shedding of Christ's blood was only for the remissions of sins. He shall cover thee with his feathers. And didn't say he was going to cover you with his blood. Get out of that church religion. Get out of that churchiness. 
being churchy and catchphrases and do what the words say. Do stand on what the words say. He shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. See, that was synonym. That was a uh, uh, that was a reference to how a bird shelters and nurture is is young under its wings is, is a form of protection for that for that that new little bird that it has. The mother bird will protect it under its wings. Anything that uh, hurt that bird, that that baby bird, gotta hurt that mother bird first. God is letting you know, just like that that bird covers and protects its children, how much more God will be there to support and cover and protect his children who trust in him. He, it said, shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust in his protection, not the blood. Under his wings shalt thou trust in his protection, not the blood. Don't put your trust in the blood. Too many people putting their trust and hope and confidence in the blood and not in the one who shed it, they blood. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler, which means that protection. Buckler is a smaller shield that you, it's more portable. You can take it wherever you go. You can take your faith and trust in, in, in God wherever you go. And God will protect you. God will shield you. God will preserve you wherever you go. Thou shall not be afraid. All these scriptures talking about fear. Thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night. We don't have to fear danger to the point of lack or trust in God. Thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night, whether it's rep night representing unexpected, unseen. We don't have to fear, amen, danger, whether it's unexpected, hidden, or unseen. Because some things do come upon you unexpectedly. Nor for the arrow that fly by day, whether, whether it's hidden things un unseen or visible, clear as day. We don't have to fear danger. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. We don't have to fear none of those things. We don't have to fear death. We don't have to fear war. We don't have to fear pestilences, which is diseases, sicknesses, in, in, pandemics and epidemics. We don't have to fear destruction. As long as you saved, you safe. Glory to God. As long as you saved, you safe. Last scripture, Deuteronomy 31 and 6. Be strong again and of a good courage. It sounds similar to Joshua 1 and 9, don't it? Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not. Again, God is instructing and commanding and exhorting and, 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 and inspiring you to be strong of a good courage and to fear not. Not don't walk in fear, fear not, nor be afraid of them. And them, them could be many things, whatever them things is. Don't fear it. For the Lord, thy God, you got to know who God is in your life for the Lord, thy God. He it is. Not these powerless gods, not these powerless people. God's word is power and he is power for he, the one who got all power for it. He it is that goeth with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. He won't let you down and he won't abandon you. As long as you trust in him, you don't have to walk in fear. God bless you. I love you. And remember, to God be all of the glory. God bless you. I need your spirit.